Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a, another quick little tutorial video for you guys. This time it is on how to delid your processor. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar with what delidding is, it's basically just removing the heat spreader from your processor in order to remove the stock thermal paste from the die and replacing it with a more efficient thermal interface which typically yields you know, anywhere from a 5 to 20 degrees C improvement in temperatures. Now the concept of delitting your processor is something that's been around for a while, but typically it was only kind of the high-end enthusiasts and overclockers that would go through the trouble of doing so because uh, up until recently the methods for delitting have been more on the sketchy side and the risk to reward ratio just wasn't all that great for most people. Traditionally, the two methods for delitting were the razor blade method, uh, which is essentially taking a razor blade and going around the uh, heat spreader to cut through the, the glue and remove it from the PCB of the processor, which, uh, as I'm sure you would imagine, it sounds as sketchy as it is. Um, some people were successful with it, others ended up damaging their processor, um, so that kind of went away when people discovered that there was a new method, which is the vice method, where you would actually put your processor into a vice and kind of hammer on it to pop the heat spreader off of the PCB, which again worked better than the razor method, but was still a little bit on the sketchy side and most people weren't really willing to take the risk, especially because um, with previous processors, you weren't really seeing a huge improvement. It was more or less just trying to take it to the next level and get the best possible overclocks from your processor. Now in comes the Intel i7-7700K. People started seeing some pretty amazing results from overclocking, upwards of 20 degrees Celsius improvement in thermals. I've actually experienced that myself. So delitting all of a sudden has become a lot more popular and a lot more mainstream, especially now because there are tools that make the process mostly safe and actually pretty darn easy. Now for this particular demonstration, I'm gonna be using the Rocket 88 tool. There are other tools on the market. Uh, this just happens to be the one that I chose to use because a lot of people have been using it. I successfully and easily delitted three processors now, so I feel comfortable recommending it to anyone that's interested in doing so. Um, but again, there are other options out there in the market that you might want to check out before you pull the trigger on a tool that you're going to use for your delid. Now I want to make sure you guys understand this is not the only way to use this tool and delid your processor. Uh, different people might use different methods. I'm simply just showing you the tools that I use and sort of the way that I do it uh, in the hopes that maybe it will make it seem a little bit easier for you guys. But if you happen to discover a new way of doing something, um, you know, more power to you. And actually, if you don't mind, go ahead and share it in the comments down below for anyone else that might be interested in, in doing this. Now before we jump into this, uh, as you're watching the video, you may notice some strange red marks all over my hands. For anyone that's ever had a puppy, I'm sure you can understand where those came from. So just try to ignore my mangled hands and hopefully it doesn't detract too much from the actual content. So I'm going to go ahead and start this off with the tools and the materials I'll be using. I've got my Rocket 88 D-Lid tool, the Relid tool, I've got a cuticle stick, my thermal interface, which I'm using the Cool Laboratory Liquid Ultra. I've got a cheap nylon paintbrush, a ruler, a gel style super glue, rubbing alcohol, scotch tape, and then of course you're going to need your processor. The first thing you're going to want to do is take your processor and gently set it into the base of the D-Lid tool, and then you're going to match up that little triangle in the bottom left with the triangle on the D-Lid tool, similar to when you set it into your motherboard. Then you're going to place the top of the D-Lid tool on and tighten the three retention bolts, uh, just finger tight, no need to go any tighter than that. Now once your processor is clamped inside of the D-Lid tool, just use the included Allen wrench to tighten down that bolt on the side until you feel the heat spreader break free from the PCB. Then you remove the lid and you will see that the heat spreader has been separated from the processor. Now once the heat spreader is removed, the first thing you're going to want to do is clean off the stock thermal compound from both the underside of the heat spreader and then also the processor die. 
Then you're going to want to remove the glue from both the heat spreader and the PCB. Uh, I'm using this particular tool. Some people use a fingernail. Uh, other people use a credit card. The important part is just don't use something that could potentially damage your PCB like a razor blade or anything sharp. Now once you've got the heat spreader and the processor nice and cleaned up, you are ready to apply the new thermal interface. Now I like to squeeze the compound onto a card or something separate and then brush it onto the die. Others will apply it directly and then brush it around. Uh, you'll have to just kind of decide which method works best for you. But this is the way I found to sort of control the amount that goes on there because you really only need a very thin layer on the die. Now this next part may be a little tricky for some. Uh, you're going to want to keep in mind that the heat spreader is smaller than the actual chip. But you want to use the ruler to measure the position of the die on the PCB. And then you want to mask off that area on the underside of the heat spreader because you only need to apply the thermal interface to that particular location. Now once you've managed all of your measurements and you've applied a thin layer of the thermal interface to the underside of the heat spreader, you can just simply pull away the tape and you should see a nice little mirror image of the processor die on the underside of the heat spreader. The next step is to take the relid tool and clamp it down onto the base of the D-lid tool. This is designed to act as sort of a jig to properly place the heat spreader back onto the processor. You simply set the heat spreader back down onto the processor and then carefully apply four small dabs of the gel style super glue onto the four corners where the heat spreader meets the PCB of your processor. Now this step is optional as some prefer to just use the clamping of the uh, motherboard retention bracket to hold the heat spreader onto the processor, um, but I find it's a little bit safer to reattach the heat spreader to the PCB so that it doesn't move around or fall off. Now all that's left to do is just take that clamp portion of the relid tool. Again, you're going to use the same three retention bolts that you used on the D-lid tool to hold down that clamp. And then that center bolt, you just want to tighten with your finger. You don't need to go too tight. This is simply just to hold it in place while that super glue sets. And then you're just going to want to let it set for a few hours and then you should be good to go. So there you have it guys. If that seemed easy, that's because it is. Uh, you don't really have to be afraid to delid your processor anymore with these tools that are available now. Uh, you should still exercise caution, um, but I think that most anyone is going to be able to do this uh, with a little bit of patience and um, you know the right tools. I've been working on some pretty exciting content for the past several weeks. I should be able to show you guys pretty soon, maybe within the next week or so. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you guys have been enjoying these sort of tutorial type videos. I, I definitely appreciate all of the positive feedback. As always, I appreciate any and all support and I will see you in the next video.